Welcome back to Waze and today's topic touches on social cultural norms as we discuss surrogacy as a reproduction alternative through the lens of a Nigerian couple as they share their story. But let's talk about what we found in the news today. But first, um, we will also talk to you about the celebration for today, which is National Write Your Story Day, ladies. And National Write, Write Your Story, story Day. Mm. And that essentially tells us, it challenges us to tell our story in written form. Mm. Not speak is right. And you may think to yourself, there's nothing in my life to tell. It will mm. surprise you once you put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and the words start filling the pages. Words have a way of triggering memories and they form a moment in time before you know it. There's a story flowing from your fingertips. So get writing. Do you guys agree? Do you have stories to tell? I, I absolutely do. do. In fact, <laughs> I think okay. my story will make a you fantastic this, novel. My story this. will make a fantastic novel. I keep saying this. Everybody has, has a, a story. story. Everybody, right. even a newborn child, has a story. Even if it's for five Ooh. minutes, has a story. Really? Yes. Story from heaven. Any no, story. There is something attached to that child. Yeah, yeah. Whoever it is, they all have a story. Yeah. And everybody has a unique story that you can actually use to impact um, one's life. It could be um, somebody who is immediate to you or somebody or who is far. Yeah. Yes, so everybody has a story. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree with that. So let's write our stories. Fantastic. Let me, I'm going I'm to write to my story. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. and when I think I'm it's 40. better. You should write your story. Don't let someone yeah. else write yeah. it for you, yeah? I will. Okay. You can do that starting with a, <laughs> with a diary or a journal. Absolutely, that's correct. If you've True. seen the movie, um, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman, yeah. uh, that's a typical yeah. story. Yes, that's a beautiful okay, one. Okay, Issy, talking about Diary of a Black, <laughs> mad mad black, black Woman, woman. <laughs> let's uh, share with us what you found in the news today. Okay, um, today's um, news um, is all about F um, FRSC, which is the Federal Rural Safety Com um, Corps. First, it comes with the story from Vanguard, which states that um, trailer crashes three and injures seven others. Wow. Now, this, is, um, this happened in Abuja, and it was um, stated by the core public education officer, Mr. B.C. Kazim, who stated that the trailer was fully loaded with cows and I don't know if it lost balance or, it, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, the brake failed or something. Or the but tires. the bottom line, yes, but the bottom line it, uh, was that it actually killed some people, oh, about wow. three of them. And at the same time, side by side was a story also, coined from Gan Vanga right. as well, which also stated that Dr. Boboye Oyeyemi, who is the core marshal of um, the road safety, stated that all school children must be, um, um, all school children should not be in a bus or a vehicle that is overloaded as well. So mm. I'm looking at it from this point of view. Um, so uh, was this after, the, you know, the, the accident with the cows in it, the it, truck happened? It, the accident actually happened in the morning. Okay. And um, Boboye stated this later. The so same day? The same day. Same so, day today, Saturday. As we were discussing earlier, we likening children to cows. Are we likening the children to <laughs> cows? So, and this is supposed to, this, this is as a result of the fact that they are trying to reduce um, um, crashes involving vehicles conveying school children. Right. And um, they are saying that they're championing child safety campaign. So I think they're also trying to go side by side and hit eight children mm -hmm. and also school owners, especially school owners who are trying to curb um, should I use the word cup? I won't use the word cup. They're trying to reduce it's costs. Cost, yeah. So it's, right. an, it's an avenue for them to ac actually um, take certain things into cognizance and the children's safety into well being. Fantastic. Yes. Oh. Okay, Lami, let's move on to you. What okay, you my think? story was taken from um, Premium Times. Okay. And I think um, Punch 2, I think, took the story. Okay. It's particularly about the justice system. And of course, you know, that's Lady my first, lawyer. <laughs> that is my first constituency. <laughs> so I would naturally jump on the story. Mm -hmm. And it's um, labeled um, Justice for Sale. So it talked about a really long story. And it talked about um, inability, you know, um, the limited access to justice. 
for people. He mm. talked about corruption within the judiciary and the police. He talked about extortion by court officials, lack so what, of diligent this is coming prosecution. On the back of what? What's justice for sale? What's the what's the idea behind it? No, it's like, just the the kind of um the kind of um limitations and the challenges right. people experience in accessing justice in Nigeria. It just did it. Oh, it's been commercialized. Is that what the idea is? Yes, oh. quite a number. So it's only the rich of, people that can afford justice. Not, yes, and the extortion. Uh -huh. Bail conditions, mm -hmm. you have to pay, you have to pay at but the I police station. I thought bail was free. Of course bail is not free. <laughs> and guess what? It's even worse when, you know there are two kinds of bail? That there's the one granted by the court and there's one at the police station. Okay. So it's a natural progression. So what happens is when an accused is arrested mm. and taken to the police station, the police officers can grant bail. If he's not charged to court within 24 hours, mm -hmm. the natural thing, if it's not murder, mm -hmm. he should be granted wow. bail. Guess what? That's even cheaper than if you allow the matter to progress to court, to court. and you get a bail, sorry, a bail condition from court. Mm -hmm. It's even worse. Because once they take you, if, if you're not able to fulfill the bail conditions on that day, mm -hmm. you naturally go to prison until you can fulfill it. And wow. trust me, it can take a month to two months. It's, it's truly a justice for sales. Uh, Do you understand? System. Then there's a lot of racketeering. Let, let me just go going to the I haven't got much time. We'll discuss this lady lawyer. Justice right. for sales in Nigeria. It's, <laughs> it's sad. Honestly, I sorry. I read the story and yeah. trust me, I could not fault it. Hmm. The person who took the story yeah. did a good job. It's so it was totally flawless. Of course, I can't flow it for any reason. Okay. okay. So, sorry ladies, I'm going to bring us back to coronavirus. I know you guys have tried to stay mm -hmm. away from it, um, but I have to share this one. And that's because it's from the UK, Daily Mail. Um, World Health Organization experts have taken a second swipe at the UK coronavirus plan, saying that Boris Johnson's herd immunity plan is a gamble. So essentially what he's trying to do is the herd immunity is a situation where a population of people, right, are protected from a disease because so many of them are unaffected by it that it cannot spread. So it's like giving you vaccines. So it's like let's infect more people. I don't know if that's a good idea. And develop so immunity. that we develop immunity hmm. as a community, right? No, uh, no, we can't. WHO is does saying, no, sense? don't try no. that. Well, it does. So it's something that works medically, but WHO is saying we can't try that now with this so virus. The because virus. the one that has already happened in China, China so so they, don't they're they're saying they have more cases haven't there. even understood it well enough, so it's, a, it's too it's, risky it's, to no, take. So serious. all they should be doing is take action, which is find, Stem isolate, and test, right? Yeah. And so for us in Nigeria, I don't even know what the plan is. Are we shutting down schools? Because in as much as people are saying, oh, no, we are you know, not it's shutting, now out. No, we are not shutting down schools. You know what? But I think that, it's, it's, that I think it's a measure that we should actually. take. I, I don't know. This is why? just my Why? But thinking. there's no emergency in Nigeria. Uh, exactly. We so don't why? know that for a fact. Because here's the thing again. They're saying we've been screening, not testing. So maybe people are actually just moving around. With but are there cases of people dying and all that? Uh, people, no, but people die in Nigeria. So you just think that they died of malaria or something else. You don't know it's coronavirus. But it's true. Well, I think if there's a huge spread of coronavirus anyways. by now would have known precisely yeah. so anyways UK healthy people, people would just i think i trust the yeah. government That's, enough for this i don't think there's That's an all. emergency for now so thank i think you, we should just leave it for now yeah. <laughs> that's all we found in the news for today folks we will take another commercial break and our first guest mrs tony ogumadi will join us right after stay with us <laughs> 